May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Our first reading for today comes from the lectionary, and it is from Acts 2, 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came, upon, came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Our second reading comes from the book Searching for Sunday by Rachel Held Evans. The spirit is like breath, as close as the lungs, the chest, the lips, the fogged canvas where little fingers draw hearts, the tide that rises and falls 23,000 times a day in a rhythm so intimate we forget to notice until it innervates or until a supine yogi says pay attention and its fragile power awes again. Inhale, exhale, expand, release. In the beginning, God breathed, and the dust breathed back, enough oxygen, water, and carbon dioxide to make an atmosphere, to make a man. Job knew life as the breath of God in my nostrils, given and taken away. With breath, the Creator kindled the stars, part of the sea, woke a valley of dry bones, inspired a sacred text. So too the spirit inhaled and exhaled in a million quotidian ways, animates, revives, nourishes, sustains, speaks. It is near as the nose and everywhere as the air, so pay attention. The spirit is like fire, deceptively polite in its dance atop the wax and wick of our church candles, but wild and mercurial as a storm when unleashed. Fire holds no single shape, no single form. It can roar through a forest or fuminate in a cannon. <clears throat> it can glow in hot coals or flit about in embers, but it cannot be held. The living know it indirectly, through heat, through light, through tendrils of smoke snaking through the sky, through the scent of burning wood, through the itch of ash in the eye. Fire consumes. It creates and it's destroying and destroys and it's creating. The furnace that smelts the ore drives off slag, and the flame that refines the metal purifies the gold. The fire that torches a centuries old tree can crack open her cones and spill out their seeds. When God led his people through the wilderness, the spirit blazed in a fire that rested over the tabernacle each night. And when God made the church, the spirit blazed in little fires that rested over God's people's heads. Quench not the spirit, the apostle wrote. It is as necessary and as dangerous as fire. So stay alert, pay attention. The spirit is like a seal, an emblem bearing the family crest, a promise of belonging, protection, favor. It is a ring to, to soft wax. The spirit impresses the subtle heart with the power and prestige of God. And no one, not kings, not presidents, not the wealthy nor the magisterium can take that identity away. The bond of God is made of vicious stuff. God has put a seal on us, wrote the apostle, and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. In the rite of confirmation, which acknowledges the presence of the spirit in a believer's life, a thumb to the forehead reminds God's children of their mark, a seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is as invisible as your breath, but as certain as your skin. So pay attention, don't forget who you are. The spirit is like wind, Earth's oldest sojourner, which is at one place readies a snail, and another whittles a rock, and another commands the trees to bow, and another gently lifts a bridal veil. Wind knows no perimeter, the wildest of all wild things. It travels to every corner of our cornerless world and amplifies the atmosphere. It smells like honeysuckle, curry, smoke, sea. It feels like a kiss, a breath, a burn, a sting. It can whisper or whistle or roar, bend and break and inflate. It can be harnessed but never stopped or contained. Its effects observed while in essence remains unseen. 
To chase the wind is a folly, they say. To try and tame it is the very definition of futility. The wind blows wherever it pleases, Jesus said. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. We are born into a windy world where the Spirit is ready as a breeze and as strong as a hurricane. There is no city, no village, no wilderness where you cannot find it. So pay attention. The Spirit is like a bird, fragile alloy of the earth and heaven, where wind and feather and flight meet breath and blood and bones. The rabbis imagined her as a pigeon, the Celts a wild goose. Like a dove, she guided over the primordial waters, hovered above Mary's womb, and descended upon Jesus' dripping wet head. She protected Israel like an eagle, and like a hen brooded over her chicks. Hide me in the shadow of your wings, the poet king wrote. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. The spirit is as common as a cooing pigeon and transcendent as a high flying eagle. So look up and sing back. Catch the light of God's wing. Pay attention. The spirit is like a womb from which the living are born again. We emerge, lashes still wet from the water, eyes unadjusted to the light, into a reimagined and freshly changed world. There are so many new things to see, so many gifts to give and receive, so many miracles to baffle and amaze, if only we pay attention, if only we let the Spirit surprise and God catch our breath.
Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Thank you. 